Okay, so today we will only do Fun Fact Chapter 1. For those who don't know who am I, my name is Wai Ling. As the same person as you receive the notes, this is me. Um, this person on the notes, okay? I, I don't know if you guys receive these notes or not, but yeah, I'm the person on the notes. I'm one of the bio teacher in TDC. So uh, in this two-hour class, I will only be teaching one chapter, which is Form 5, Chapter 1. I will teach the entire thing. But the question, we didn't get to do it because for question-wise, there's a lot of questions that I prepare for you guys. So if you didn't finish the question, it's okay, guys. I will give you the answer so you can try by yourself. So it will be a notes, question, and answer, okay? Hopefully that you have your notes with you. If you don't have your notes with you, you can look at the screen first, write it on the paper first, okay? Now, we're going to start. With the first thing first, okay, we have to learn about the label thing. Everything in biology, the first thing that we have to learn is always the label part. We have to always remember, biology has three important organisms, that three living organisms that we have to learn, human, plants, and animals. People always think that plant is the hardest to understand, but guys, plant is not the hardest to understand. Plant is the easiest one among the three organisms to understand because plants is very simple. It means A is A, B is B. You don't have any other question besides that. So actually, plants is quite easy compared to human. Human is the most complicated one. Plant is the easy one. Okay, hopefully that uh, by today's class, you can fully understand in chapter one. Yeah, In organization of plant tissue, we have two different types of tissue. We have meristematic tissue. We have permanent tissue. What does meristem mean? Meristem means young plant cell. Okay, meristem, it means young plant cell. Young plant cell is the cell that they have to grow. It's called young plant cell. Permanent tissue means what? It means it's a mature tissue. Mature tissue means permanent tissue. We will start with meristem first. We have two different types of meristem. We have apical meristem. We have lateral meristem. Apical means cheap. Okay, apical, it means cheap. Lateral, it means side. Okay, remember that uh, apical means tip, lateral means the side. Apical means tip, lateral means the side. Apical meristem. Since they are young plant cells, in order for them to grow, they have to carry out a process called mitosis. Okay, they have to carry out a process called mitosis. What does mitosis mean? Mitosis means one cell they will produce into two cells, two cells into four, four into eight. Where the cell produce, it will be genetically identical. What does genetically identical means? It means exactly the same. It's called genetically identical, exactly the same. For example, human, we will also carry out mitosis, right? How does mitosis is being happened in human? Let's say when I cut my hand, my cell will die. So when I want to produce a new cell, I will carry out mitosis. So remember, mitosis is to produce many, many cells and all of these cells are genetically identical, exactly the same. So one to two, two to four, four to eight. So apical meristem, we have root apical and shoot apical. When we look at this diagram, we have to be careful of the uh, sequence of it. Now, how do we look at root tip? Root tip, we have to look upwards. Okay, root tip, we have to look upwards. Shoot tip, we have to look downwards. Okay, we have a sequence over here. Shoot tip, we have to look downwards. Root tip, we have to look upwards. Okay, why do we have this sequence? Because we have three different zones. The first zone is called zone of cell division. The second zone is called zone of cell elongation. The third zone is called zone of cell differentiation. We have three zones in total. Same as this one, number one, division. Number two, elongation. Number three, differentiation. Apical means the tip. Tip, uh. tip is called apical, okay? So for root apical meristem, we have to know the zone, division, elongation, differentiation. We will start with the root tip first. What is at the root tip? Root tip at the outer layer, they are covered with a thing called root cap. The function of root cap is to prevent the root tip from mechanical injury. What does mechanical injury mean? It means uh, injury that's not done by human. It's under natural disaster. For example, maybe you got a bacterial infection or maybe you got insect invasion. So it's not done by human. We call this as mechanical injury. Or maybe the, the soil is too hard. So when they're going downwards, the root cap is to prevent the root tip from breaking into parts because sometimes you know the soil is very hard when they are trying to grow downwards. So the root cap is a protective layer. But root cap can only be found in primary growth. Secondary growth, we don't have root cap. So that we can understand root cap, it will be degenerated. So over here, it will be degenerated, degenerated, and replaced by apical meristem. Okay, so root cap, it will be degenerated. It will be replaced by the apical meristem. Because, remember, root cap is not permanent. It's just temporarily for primary growth. Uh, this is what we call as root cap. Okay, now, after that, 
we will have root hair. Root hair is at the outer layer of zone of cell differentiation. Root hair usually comes in many, not one, but many of it, we call it as root hair. Yeah? The reason why they need a lot of it is because they have to increase total surface area. When the surface area is larger, it also means that they have more area to absorb more water. So they increase total surface area to absorb more water and also mineral. That's the reason why they need a lot of root hair. So next time when you see a lot of things in biology, like a lot in folded membrane or numerous in number, it's always to increase surface area. They want to absorb more water and mineral. Okay, so this is in the root tip. Should tip the labor part, you don't have to know. What I want you to know from this diagram is the three zone. First zone is called division. Second zone is called elongation. Third zone is called differentiation. This is under apical meristem. Remember the sequence, yeah? The easiest, the easiest way to recognize this is actually by looking at the tip. If this part is the pointy area, right? This is the pointy area, you have to look upwards. This one is the pointy area, you look downwards. So it's easier. Pointy area, look upwards. Pointy area, look downwards. Okay, so this is root tip and shoot tip. Okay, next we have lateral meristem. Lateral means side. They will grow laterally, grow sideways. Yeah? They, they, need, they need to carry out secondary growth. Secondary growth is to increase in diameter. So secondary growth. To carry out secondary growth, it requires two different tissue. We have vascular cambium. We have cord cambium. Vascular means what? Anything related to vascular. We have to remember, vascular refers to xylem and phloem. Okay, vascular refers to xylem and phloem. Can you guys tell me what is the function of xylem? Hmm. What is the function of xylem, guys? Xylem transport? Very good. Transport water and mineral. Correct. Transport water and mineral from the roots to all parts of plant. What is the function of phloem? Phloem transport? Phloem transport? Okay, very good. Transport organic substances. If you are trying to type nutrients, food or sugar, not correct. Your only answer here is not only that, but you have to write organic substances or you can say photosynthetic product or you can say products of photosynthesis. Waste, worst case scenario, you can write sucrose, but you cannot write sugar. So the best answer is organic substances. Okay, now, why do we write organic substances? Because we have to understand Phloem is not just to transport nutrients. Sometimes they will also transport hormone, they will also transport enzyme, they will also transport mineral and also water. All of these things are known as organic substances. So they don't just transport food, they will also transport other things as well. So organic substances will be a better answer. Okay, the other one we have cork cambium, C O R K. Whenever you look at the word C O R K, we have to remember they are protective tissue. Anything started with cork, C O R K. They are protective tissue. Remember, C-O-R-K means protective tissue. So this is lateral meristem. Okay, so this is in page two. We're going to start all over again. Right now, it's your turn to answer me, guys. We have two different types of tissue. We have meristematic tissue. We have permanent tissue. What does meristem mean? Meristem means young plant cell. Very good. What does permanent mean? Permanent means mature. Correct. So in meristematic tissue, we have apical, we have lateral. Apical means what? Apical means tip, very good. Lateral means side, all right? Lateral means side. So if you look at the shoot tip and root tip in apical meristem, should tip look downwards or upwards? Should tip. Should the sequence is looking down or up? Should tip, all right? Looking downwards, our shoot is looking downwards, okay? Root tip, we have to look upwards. We have to find the point, okay? The tip of it, then you can look up or downwards. We have three zones in total. The first zone is called zone of cell. Cell division. Very good. Okay. Second zone is called zone of cell. Elongation. Correct. The third zone is called zone of cell. Differentiation. Very good. Three zone in sequence. In lateral meristem, we have two different cells that carry out secondary growth. So the first cambium that we have is what cambium? The first cambium is? Vascular cambium. Okay, whenever we think about vascular, we have to think of what? Vascular related to what? Vascular related to xylem and phloem. Very good. The other one, cork cambium, C O R K, remember as a protective tissue. Very good. Okay, so this is in page two. Anybody has question in page two? Any part you don't understand in page two, guys? Everyone okay with this? Okay, okay. Now, next, we're going to look at page three. We have permanent tissue. 
as we have said, what is permanent tissue? Permanent tissue is a mature tissue. Mature tissue means that they have carried out cell differentiation. Any cell that carry out cell differentiation, it means they will have a specific function. In every part in biology, whenever you see the word cell differentiation, okay, so they need to have a specific function. Cambium is to form xylem and phloem. It's a cambium. Okay, to form xylem and phloem is is a called cambium. Uh, usually in usually in vascular cambium is to form xylem phloem. In cork cambium, they have to form cork. It's a formation of certain thing. It's called cambium. Okay, now permanent tissue. We have three different types. We have epidermal tissue. We have vascular tissue. We have ground tissue. What does epidermal means? We can understand epidermal as the outermost layer. The outermost layer, outermost layer is called epidermal. Outermost layer, epidermal tissue. Epidermal tissue, we have three outermost layer. Example, we have cuticle. Cuticle means waxy layer. This waxy layer is to prevent excess water loss. In the, on the leaf itself, we have two surfaces. We have the smooth surface, we have a rough surface. So the smooth surface is because that they have wax. In the city, let's say in the city, our waxy layer is not very thick because we have, even though we have a lot of light, but because we have a lot of buildings that they have reflection, so the waxy layer is not so thick. But if it's at the seaside, okay, seaside, the cuticle is thicker because they have to prevent even more water loss. So that's why cuticle is to prevent excess water loss. Uh, this is the function of cuticle. To prevent loss of water through a process called transpiration. Transpiration means water loss process. It's called transpiration. Okay, we have root hair cell. What is a root hair cell? Root hair cell is the one that we see over here. Can you see the, the line over here? All of these? Inside is it, we have root hair cell. We have many, many root hair cells. The reason why we have many root hair cells and they are longer because they want to increase surface area. When the surface area is longer, larger, they can absorb more water and mineral. So for water, they will absorb through what process? Water is by what process, guys? Water is always osmosis. Very good. Okay, water is always osmosis. Mineral is what process? Mineral is active transport. Very good. This is active transport. Okay, what is the difference between osmosis and active transport? Osmosis doesn't require energy. Active transport requires energy. In exam, let's say in Form 4, Chapter 3, uh, they ask you to write the, the difference. Okay? Maybe they give you a diagram. They ask you to write uh, the process that requires energy. You have to write example. If they say it requires energy, then you're going to write mineral. If they say the process does not require energy, then your example will be water. So it's very depending on whether the question has example or no example. So this is the difference between them. Uh. They will give you the same diagram, but you remember to read the question. Sometimes it's a bit tricky there for you to know. And for you to know, over here is longer, right? Uh, this is what we call as long projection. Uh, you actually learn this in Form 5, Chapter 3 also. If you remember, we have a long projection of a root hair cell. Everything that looks like that, uh, confirm this is a root hair cell. Okay, next we have gut cell. What is the function of gut cell? Gut cell is to control opening and closing of stomata. Okay, now how do they control opening and closing of stomata? Every gut cell, they have chloroplast, but it's not a lot. They have chloroplast, but it's not a lot. The function of chloroplast is to carry out. It contains of chlorophyll so that they can carry out photosynthesis. Very good. They can carry out photosynthesis. Okay, what does photosynthesis produce? Photosynthesis produce what? Oxygen and glucose, correct? So usually when the stomata open, it means this is during daytime. Close, it means nighttime, okay? Daytime and nighttime. Over here, during daytime, why do they open? Because we have seen, right? In the chloroplast, we have, oh sorry, in the, in the gut cell, we have chloroplast, where they can carry out photosynthesis. They will produce glucose. Glucose will be produced. Once they have more glucose, as you compare, they have lesser water. Okay, as you compare, they have lesser water. Again, you compare to surrounding cell. Surrounding cell has more water. Water always diffuses from more water to lesser water. Water will diffuse into the gut cell. As they diffuses into the gut cell, the gut cell will open. Why? Because the gut cell becomes turgid. Turgid means what? Turgid means that the water diffuses into it. It's called turgid. When water diffuses into the back wall, we call this as turgid. Okay, next. Why during nighttime they will close? Because nighttime got no photosynthesis. So they have lesser glucose. Lesser glucose means as to compare, they have more water. 
surrounding cell has lesser water. Water will diffuse out back to surrounding cell again. So that's why they were close. Close means flaccid. Close means flaccid. So this is one of the reasons why they were opening and closing of stomata. Remember, everything here is related to water. It's not just chloroplast. Sometimes they will give you potassium. Sometimes they give you water. But the concept behind it is always water diffuses in, they open, water diffuses out, they close. This is what you learn in Form 5, Chapter 3 also, if you remember, under opening okay, and closing. Will this come up or AC? Yeah? This one you learn in Form 5, Chapter 3. If your exam has Chapter 3, maybe yes. If your exam has no Chapter 3, then no law. Because this is under Form 5, Chapter 3. Yeah? Okay, next we have vascular tissue. Again, we have learned when the word, when you look at the word vascular, you have to think of what? Vascular means what, guys? Vascular means xylem phloem. Very good, xylem and phloem, right? So we have mentioned that just now, xylem transport water and mineral. Phloem transport organic substances. Water, mineral, organic substances. Okay, this is the function that we have learned before. It's not just function that we have to learn. In Form 4, it's like in Form 5, Chapter 4, I know that in some of your school teacher, you already finished Chapter 4, but... For you to know that you have to learn the same thing again in Form 5 Chapter 4. Uh, we have to learn about xylem and phloem. So what is what is the important thing about xylem? Xylem looks like a straw. Phloem looks like a sugar cane. I don't know if you think look like a sugar cane or a bamboo. La. They are section by section. But xylem looks like a straw. Okay, it looks like a straw over here. So for xylem, what do you have to know from this part? They are a dead cell. Dead cell means that they cannot control water flow. When you put a lot of water, the plants will actually die. I mean, if you don't believe, you can try. La. Try it. Don't, don't tell your parents it's taught by your bio teacher, la, guys. Your plants will die because your plants cannot control water flow. So when the thing, they are dead cell in xylem, they are taken by a thing called lignin. So next time when you see the word lignin, sorry, when you see the word lignin, right, you have to think of they are actually a dead cell. Lignin, they are dead cell, okay? And because they are hollow, it's like a straw. So they have to be hollow. They have to be elongated. Hollow means empty, elongated means long. They have to join together to transport more water and mineral. So they have to be elongated and hollow, connected to each other so that they are able to transport more water. When a xylem is taken by lignin, they are able to provide support and mechanical strength. Okay, they are able to provide support and mechanical strength. So this is the xylem characteristic. So for phloem, they are made of living cell. One is dead cell, one is living cell. Dead cell means what? They have no nucleus, there's no cytoplasm. But living cell means what? It means they have a nucleus, they have a cytoplasm. I know in this diagram, you cannot see there's a nucleus there, but actually, phloem, they have one more cell at the side. You can draw at the side over here. We have one more cell over here. I didn't, I didn't find the diagram with the cell. So we call this cell as companion cell. Let me label over here. This is known as companion cell. Companion cell. This is a sieve tube. So every sieve tube will have a companion cell. Companion means a friend. Okay, it's like you and your friend, lah. Okay, when you go out, one have to bring a brain out, right? One you can be uh, someone that don't know how to look at the map, right? So companion cell is the one with brain. Sieve tube is the one that without brain. So depending on which one you want to be, you want to be a sieve tube or you want to be a companion cell. Companion cell is the one with nucleus. So that's why they are living cell because they have a nucleus and because they have cytoplasm. They have a space to be alive, a living cell. So for phloem, they are able to transport organic substances with the presence of companion cell and also mitochondria in the companion cell. So this is xylem and phloem. But of course, in chapter one, you don't have to know so many details. What you have to know is just dead cell and living cell. Transport water and minerals, transport organic substances. That's all. The rest of the characteristic, you will learn it in Form 5, Chapter 4, or you have learned it in Form 5, Chapter 4, under transpiration of plants. Uh. Okay. Now, this is vascular tissue. Next, we have ground tissue, the third permanent tissue. Ground tissue here, every name ends with chyma. Chyma, 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 okay? Chyma, chyma, chyma. Uh, in Mandarin, chyma means godmother, but this is not the godmother, but it has a similar function as godmother. So, they all of these things, they provide support, like your godmother like, provides support. Parent chyma tissue, they will provide support Provide support, okay. Colon chyma tissue, they will also provide mechanical support. Scaren chyma tissue, they will also provide support. Everything here provides support, but of course, it's in the form of different different way. Parent chyma tissue is known as the simplest living cell. Okay, make it, you can make it over here. They are known as a simplest 
living cell. Okay, even though it's called simplest living cell, uh, but they have the most function. Uh, the reason why it's called simplest living cell is because that they do not carry out differentiation. They don't carry out differentiation. They are simplest living cell. But they have a lot of function uh, in parenchyma tissue. Parenchyma tissue characteristic, number one, we have to know. They have thin cell wall, thin wall cell, and large nuclei, also large vacuole, okay? Thin cell wall and large vacuole. If you notice that the vacuole is very large over here. Okay, what is in the vacuole? Can you guys tell me? In vacuole, what do you have it? What is in the vacuole? Correct. Vacuole, we have cell set, which is nutrients, water, minerals, enzymes, hormone. We call this as vacuole, okay? Vacuole content. In, we have cell set. Since we know, water will diffuse into the vacuole, right? When water diffuses into it, they will maintain a shape called turgid state. Turgid means what? Turgid, we have a word called turgidity. Turgidity is from a pressure called turgo pressure, okay? They have a thing called turgidity. Uh, turgidity is from a pressure called turgo pressure. What does this thing mean? When water diffuses into the vacuum, uh, that is called turgidity. Water diffuses in, it's called turgidity. Yeah? So why do they need turgidity? Because in herbaceous plant. Herbaceous means non-woody plant. Non-woody plant uses water as a support. Non-woody plant uses water as a support. That's why they have to maintain a turgid state. When water diffuses into it, it becomes bigger, backward becomes bigger. They are able to maintain that they are able to provide support to non-woody plant, which is herbaceous plant. And this backward, they are also able to store photosynthetic product because they can carry out photosynthesis. They are green in color. Okay, so this is under parent chyma tissue. Parent chyma tissue is one of the tissue that you always see in your exam. Always. Because in all parts of the plants, they have parent chyma tissue. Ground tissue, the other ground tissue, we have colon chyma tissue. Colon chyma tissue, special thing is they have uneven taken cell wall at the side. Can you see? There's a corner over here. Uneven. Taken cell wall. Uneven taken cell wall, they are made of pectin and hemicellulose. Hemicellulose is the one that the reason why they are taken at the site. Uh, those are called hemicellulose. They are also able to provide support to the plants. Scarring chyma tissue, they are taken by lignin. Do you guys remember just now I say, right? When things that are taken by lignin, what? They are what cell? When they are taken by lignin, they have to be a Dead cell, very good. They are dead cell. So they are dead at maturity. They are dead cell. Dead cell doesn't mean they are useless. Dead cell, it means that they cannot control activities only, but they can still have their own function, yeah, guys. They are able to provide support as well. So we have parent chyma tissue, colon chyma tissue, and scaring chyma tissue. For parent chyma tissue, we have to recognize the diagram. When it's round, it has to be parent chyma. When they have larger vacuole and there's a gap in between this area over here, can you see this gap? Uh, uh, this is parent chyma tissue. Colon chyma tissue, they have taken corners. Scaring chyma tissue looks like a beehive. You know the bee? Beehives, okay, like a beehive. In exam, they will still ask you to write the name based on the diagram. So we have to recognize the diagram. Based on the diagram, we have to write this is a parent chyma, colon chyma, or scaring chyma. But most of the time, when they ask you to write function, they usually ask you to write for parent chyma. Because parent chyma, a lot of chapters in chapter three or four, we will also learn back to parent chyma tissue again. So actually parent chyma is more important la, as compared to other ground tissue. This page, uh, we have learned it before in Form 4, Chapter 2. But I have, I don't know if you remember this, but you have learned this before in Form 4, Chapter 2, okay? They are under permanent tissue. They carry out cell differentiation. Okay, now, done with this. Anybody has question about permanent tissue, guys? Uh, this question, it will not be an AC question. Most likely, there will be a structural question. They ask you to write the function of cuticle. They ask you to write the function of root hair cell or xylem phloem. So most, most likely, it's a, it's, a, it's a writing function question or based on diagram to write the name. So how many marks are? Uh, usually, maximum is four marks. But we have to understand the fact that everything here, we will learn it again in next chapter. This one and this one, we will learn it in chapter three. This is in chapter four. So if you only based on chapter one, the marks is not a lot. But if you want to base on with other chapter, maybe the marks is higher. Because in other chapter, you learn more details about this part. But for chapter one, maximum mark is only four marks, I would say. This page, uh, four marks, okay? It's maintaining the shape of a leaf, leaf part of, of the function of a parent camera. If it's based on plant cell, then it has to be cell wall. But if you want to say based on the shape of it, right? 
So it's a very depending on uh, whether they are monocot or unicot. But if generally, then the answer is yes, that is ground, it's, it's a ground tissue. It's a parenchyma tissue. So you have to see whether it's monocot or unicot also actually. But generally, the answer is parenchyma. Lah. Okay, Ken? Anyone has question at this page? Anybody has question on page three? You want to ask anything? No? Okay, now let's look at next one. Okay, next one, we have a comparison between unicot and monocot. Sometimes in your books, okay, you don't write unicot. People write dicot. Di and UD is the same thing, guys. I want to tell you, di and UD is the same thing. But in your textbook, you write unicot. Okay, we always follow textbook. So textbook, write unicot. We follow unicot. No matter whether it's unicot or monocot, we have to learn three parts. We have to learn leaf, stem, and root. Okay, leaf, stem, and root. We will start with leaf first. So for leaf part, for okay, we look at dicot, dicot first. Yeah, leaf part. It looks like a watch. I don't know if you guys can imagine this, but it looks like a watch that you wear. It looks like a watch, right? Okay, and then in the outermost layer of this leaf, we have epidermis. Epidermis means what? The outermost layer. What is the difference between epidermis and epidermal tissue? In exam, if they want you to write tissue, then you're going to write epidermal tissue. If they want you to name the structure, then it will be epidermis. Okay, so it's very depending on whether they are asking you to write uh, the tissue name or the structure name. But they are the same thing, which is the outermost layer. Lah. Epidermis, they are covered by cuticle. Okay, this is the characteristic of epidermis. Ah. They are covered by cuticle, which is the waxy layer. They want to prevent excess water loss and they want to protect the plant from mechanical injury. We have mentioned that what is a mechanical injury. Mechanical injury means that it's an injury that is not, uh, that is not made by human. It's some other factor. Bacterial infection or, uh, or insect invasion is called mechanical injuries. The characteristic for leaf, I mean, not the epidemics over here, we can only use it in leaf and stem. How come in root we cannot use this characteristic? Because root is to absorb water. When they come up with cuticle, it means that they cannot absorb water. So root epidermis is not covered by cuticle because they need to absorb water. So this characteristic, we can only use it in leaf and stem. Okay, the outermost layer. Yeah. Okay, and then we have to learn xylem and phloem. Xylem, phloem, cambium is known as vascular bundle. Same thing, stem, xylem, phloem, cambium, known as vascular bundle. Root is called vascular cylinder. Uh, but they are still referring to xylem and phloem, just that at different parts, we have different names. So we're going to look at the, uh, the, the location for xylem and phloem. So for xylem, you only have to know xylem, then you will know phloem. At the leaf, xylem is on top. The top part is xylem. Okay. For stem, xylem is inside. How do you want to remember stem? We have a thing called ringing experiment that we have learned it before in lower form. If you don't remember, it'll give you a revision again. Okay, so this is the normal stem. They cut it in the middle. They ask you what happens after three months or one month later. The top part of the stem, it will be swollen. The bottom part will shrink, if you remember. So the outer layer that's being removed is actually the phloem. So phloem is outside. Xylem is inside. They don't remove xylem one because once you remove xylem, the plants will die. So most likely, they will only just remove the phloem because once you remove xylem, they cannot transport water. The plants will wilt very fast, which is one day they will die when there's no more water. So they usually remove the phloem. Uh, annual plant, they will remove the phloem for farmers. Farmers, they will remove the phloem for annual plant because they can only live for one year, right? They will die once they produce fruit. So why do they do this to the plants? Because once you remove the phloem, the fruit can be stored above the tree. So the fruit can be bigger in size. So that's why we have a removing remo removal of um, phloem to make sure that the fruit is bigger in size. Lah. So this is stem. So stem has a ring in the middle. This is a ring. Okay, xylem is inside, phloem is outside. Yeah? And then we have root. Root, very special. The xylem has a shape. It's called star-shaped xylem. It's a star pattern. I know it's a cross, but we don't call cross. We call it a star shape. This area here is called star shape. Okay, it's called star shape xylem. The one in purple color is known as phloem. So the phloem will fill in the area between the xylem. You only have to know the location for xylem. Then you will know the location for phloem. Okay, what I want you to remember this part is xylem is on top. Okay, top, stem, xylem is inside. Okay, at root, xylem is a star shape. So top, inside, star shape, okay? Top, inside, star shape. This is the location for xylem. 
Okay, why do I want you to know the location? Because sometimes they want you to identify the diagram, to label the diagram. Then you have to know where is the xylem, where is the phloem. Okay, another thing. For you to understand, we have pit and cortex as well. Pit is right in the middle. Cortex is outside. The function of pit and cortex is to store food. It's a storage of food. That is a pit and cortex is to store food, okay? Pairing cycle is to form a lateral root because this is a root, right? They will form more root at the side by using pericycle. So this is the function of pericycle, pith, and cortex. Okay, now done with unicot, we have to look at monocot. Monocot is not in the textbook, but when they are not in the textbook, it doesn't mean that they won't ask in the exam. Sometimes they will still ask in the exam. So for you to understand, monocot, we also have leaf, stem, and root. The location for xylem is the same. Just like we learned, right? Location for xylem at leaf is on top, right? And this is also on top. This part here is the xylem. The bottom is phloem. For stem, xylem is inside, phloem is outside. Same thing, the one inside red color one is xylem. The one that is outside is phloem. The difference between these two stems will be the unicot, they will form into a ring shape. For monocot, they have no pattern. It's scattered around. It's all over randomly places. Even though they are random, but the xylem is still inside, the phloem is still outside, even though they are random, but they have a correct arrangement of xylem and phloem. And then for root, they have an alternate xylem phloem tissue that forms into a ring shape as well. So we have xylem phloem, xylem phloem, xylem phloem. So it's an alternative of xylem phloem, xylem phloem. They will form into a ring shape. So this is how a um, vascular bundle form. Okay, in exam, they will ask you to label, they will ask you to write where is the xylem and phloem. Okay, right now, your turn to answer my question, guys. We have unicot. Unicot, we have leaf, stem, and root. Okay, at the epidermis of leaf and stem, what is covered at the outer layer of the leaf? Can you tell me? We have cuticle. Very good. Can you tell me what is the function of cuticle? All right, to prevent water loss. Very good. And then the other function is? What is the other function, right? Besides preventing water loss, correct? To protect the plant from mechanical injury is very good. Not injury, it's mechanical injury, yeah? Okay, and then we have the location for xylem. For leaf, where is the xylem? On top, correct. In the stem, where is the xylem? Inside, correct. Okay, where is the xylem? At the root. Is the star shape very good? Top insect star shape very good. Okay, and then for monocot, we also have leaf, stem, and root. So the location is still, still the same. Is the top is xylem, inside is still xylem, and then for root, there's no star shape, but they have a ring shape. So this is the xylem phloem and the vascular bundle. Okay, anyone has question on page four that you want to ask? Okay, page four, as I mentioned, remember we have to know the xylem and phloem location. Teacher, is the cuticle at root don't have wax layer? No. In a the root, there is no cuticle. Cuticle means wax layer. So at root, there is no cuticle. Because if the root has cuticle, it means that they cannot absorb water. So root got no cuticle, it means there is no wax layer. Okay? So this is the unicot. Okay, anyone has question? Anyone has question at this page? Anybody question? Okay, no question. We're going to look at one more page and then we're going to try some question later, yeah? So we have... We have learned, we have three zone, three zones just now that we learned in the first page, right? Can you guys tell me what is the first zone again? The first zone is called zone of cell. Cell division. Very good. Second zone is called zone of cell. Elongation. Very good. The third zone is called zone of cell. Differentiation. Correct. Division, elongation, differentiation. It comes in a sequence, remember. In a sequence down, we have division, elongation, differentiation. What does zone of cell division mean? Division means one into two, two into four. They want to increase number of cells, increase the number of cells. Elongation means what? Elongation means that they want to increase the size and mass of the cell. Means they want to become bigger and they want to increase the size and mass of the cell. Okay, now what is cell differentiation means? Differentiation means that they will form into a permanent tissue with specific function. Form into a permanent tissue with specific function. So this is actually the uh, importance of three, this three zone. But to learn the detail part, how do they increase number of cells? In zone of cell division, it have to happen in the meristematic cell. Can you tell me what does meristem means again? Meristem means young plant cell. So as a young cell, they need to grow. 
So when they are growing, they have to carry out mitosis. Mitosis produce genetically identical cells. It means the same. So one to two, two to four, with no problem, they keep on growing, growing, growing. In these cells, they arrange closely because they want to grow more, right? They arrange closely. The nucleus is larger. They have no vacuole. Then cytoplasm, thin cell wall. These four characteristics are the characteristics of cell. If they ask you to write characteristics of cell, you have to say they have larger nucleus, they have no vacuole, they have dense cytoplasm, and thin cell wall. Okay, so this is the four parts that you have to know. Huh? Large nuclei, no vacuole, dense cytoplasm, thin cell wall. So when they are growing more and more and more, they will push the cell into the next zone. It's called zone of cell elongation. So if you notice from the diagram, there is no there is no vacuole. Huh? It's only got nucleus, but there's no vacuole. And they're very dense. It's, it's darker in green color. When it goes to elongation, elongation means they increase in size and mass. How do they want to increase in size and mass? From no vacuole, right now they will start into a vacuole. Smaller vacuole, they will form into a larger vacuole. How does small vacuole form into larger vacuole? Nutrient has to go in. Water has to go in because the function of vacuole is to store cell side. Cell side means water, mineral, nutrients, min uh, and glucose, amino acid, right? So nutrients is absorbed into the vacuole. Not just nutrients, water will also diffuses into it by a process called osmosis. Anything related to water diffuses in and out is always osmosis. Small vacuole, they will fuse to form into a larger vacuole called vacuolation. Vacuolation, okay? Small to larger vacuole called vacuolation. So remember, yeah, water is always osmosis. Smaller vacuole to larger vacuole called vacuolation. So when they are becoming bigger, we always mention that plant cell has a large central cell. When they become bigger, to the bigger size, they will push to the cell wall, they will create a pressure called turgor pressure. Just like we say, right, when water diffuses into it, they will create a turgor pressure, right? So this is the elongation. And then differentiation. Differentiation means what? Every differentiation, they will be a permanent tissue with specific function, remember? Every differentiation, they will have a specific function. In order to form into permanent tissue, they will change in shape and structure. They will change in shape and structure in order for them to form into a permanent tissue. Permanent tissue can be the one that we learned just now. We have xylem, phloem, ground, a gut cell, parenchyma, colon chyma, sclerenchyma. Those are known as permanent tissue. Okay. In exam, how do they ask you this question? In structure question, they ask you to explain based on the zone. Every zone can be explained. Eh? In AC question, they ask you to explain everything. So it's very right depending on whether it's structure question or AC question. Structure, it means specific zone. AC means entire thing. So growth of zone in plants is important for your exam, guys. Mark a star over here, okay? It's important for your exam. Okay, now up to this point, do you guys have any question that you want to ask? Teacher, are parenchyma tissue involved in this process? Uh, parenchyma tissue also involved in this process, but not, not to say process. Uh, if you say process, it's not about parenchyma tissue is a permanent tissue. Even though they are called simplest living cell. Uh, they don't undergo differentiation, but they are under permanent tissue. Okay, so in root, stem, and leaf, we have a lot of parenchyma tissue. When they don't even carry out differentiation, they have their own function because most of the function come from the vacuole. So vacuole don't need to undergo differentiation. To maintain turgidity, there's no differentiation. Okay, anyone has questions? So they just elongate the stem core, right? They just become bigger like, most of the time, parent camera. Okay, anyone has question? Okay. Okay, now no question. We're gonna try some exercise at the back, guys. We have a lot of questions that I prepared for you, but of course, I didn't I didn't expect that we can finish all the questions in class, lah. Okay. So let's look at the question right now. This is the question. Okay, page one, question one. Please flip to your page one, question one, guys. If you have your notes, please remember to write it on your notes. If you don't have a note, please you can write it down on the paper first. Okay, first question. Diagram 1 shows a cross-section of a unicot root. Name the structure, label P and Q. Okay, let me change the question a bit. Because I don't want you to label structure, I want you to label the tissue, okay? Permanent tissue. Uh. We change the question a little bit because I want you to label the permanent tissue, okay? So we have P, Q, and R. P, Q, R. Okay, let's start from P. If you notice, P is the outermost layer. What tissue do you call this as? The outermost layer is called epidermal tissue. Epidermal. 
If it's a tissue, guys, remember the name has to end with the tissue. If the question asks you to write tissue, uh, you have to end with the tissue. Epidermis is the structure. If I label this part, this part will be epidermis. But if I want to write tissue, then it will be epidermal tissue. It will be epidermal tissue. For Q, okay, if you don't know what is Q, it's okay. We're going to write R first. If you don't know what is Q, we're going to write R first. Uh. R, we have two parts, X and Y. So we have a star shape and we have the thing that fills in around it. Can you guys tell me what is R? R is a vascular tissue. Very good. A vascular tissue. Vascular cylinder is correct, but we're going to write vascular tissue. Generally, just write tissue. Lah, okay? If you don't know what to write, if you don't know whether it's a bundle or tissue, uh, whether it's a bundle or cylinder, just write vascular tissue. Okay, And then Q, we left one last tissue. It's called ground tissue. Ground tissue is a permanent tissue. So the cortex, the teeth, they have a lot of parenchyma tissue. So ground tissue, okay? Next, structure R consists of two types of tissue, namely X and Y. Involved in the transport of substance in plant cell, name two tissue. X is a star shape, right? So what is X? X is xylem, very good. Y is phloem, correct. And next question, they ask you to write the function of xylem and phloem. Just now we learned, xylem transport what again? Xylem transport? All right, water and mineral salt. What is the function of phloem? Phloem transport, organic substances. Very good. So to write your answer, transport water and mineral salt. Iron also can, salt also can. From root to all parts of plant. Phloem transport organic substances from leaves to all parts of plant. From leaves to all parts of plant. Done, guys? Okay, done. Next question. State one difference between tissue X and Y. Okay, if you want to write one differences, because just now we wrote the function already, right? We're going to write some easy answer. X is xylem, Y is phloem. So the easiest answer that we're going to write is writing they are dead cell or living cell. Xylem is a dead or living cell. All right, xylem is a dead cell. Very good. Xylem is a dead cell. Phloem is a living cell. Very good. Phloem is a living cell. So X is a dead cell, Y is a living cell. This is an easiest one to, to, to write and to remember. In exam, you cannot write in table. You can only write in table when it's in AC question. In structure question, we cannot write this. Structure question, we have to write X is a dead cell, whereas Y is a living cell. Stating, don't need to explain. We just state the, just state the differences. Can we talk about lignin? Of course you can. You can say X is taken by lignin. Y does not taken by lignin also can. It's explain true function. Because just now we write function differences already. If a continuous question, you cannot write function anymore. Because unless you talk about the structure, structural differences, you can say xylem has a xylem vessel and trachis. Phloem has companion cell and the sieve cube. Then you can talk about that. But of course, this cell and living cell is the easiest one. Okay, see, the outermost layer of stem and leaf are covered by a waxy and waterproof coating substance. Name the substance. What is this substance called? It's called cuticle. Very good. Cuticle. Explain why plants need cuticle. Cuticle is to prevent excess water loss. Correct. Prevent excess water loss through transpiration. Or you can prevent, prevent the plants from mechanical injuries. Both also can. You can choose one to write. Prevent excess. Water loss through transpiration. Okay, the other one. Protect the plant from mechanical injury. From mechanical injuries. You can choose one to write, guys. 
if you haven't learned um, chapter four before, you can actually write prevent excess water loss through evaporation. Also can learn. Okay, explain one difference between epidermis of stem and root. Epidermis, it means the outermost layer. The difference between stem and root is one has cuticle, the other one has no cuticle. Very good. This one has cuticle. This one got no cuticle. In exam, you cannot write in table form. Remember, you have to write in sentence. Huh? Okay, to explain, because explanation requires explain your answer. Stem, when there is cuticle, they can prevent excess water loss. Then what about roots? Why, why they cannot have cuticle at the root? Because root need to absorb water. Very good. To absorb water and minerals. This is the difference between stem and root. Okay, now done with this, we're going to look at next one. Draw a simple label diagram to show the main tissue in a cross-section of leaves. Okay, how do we draw a simple label diagram? Leaf, just now we say, we have a pattern. Do you guys remember what pattern is the leaf? It is a unicorn. Uh? A watch, very good. Looks like a watch, right? So when you draw, don't have to draw perfectly, but something like that, guys. Like something like that. And then you draw like that. And then you're going to draw another layer because we have epidemics, right? Another layer. Over here. Okay. And then we will have to draw the vascular bundle. We're going to draw the vascular bundle. Remember, it's a label diagram. Most of the time, the student eyes are, don't know what happened. I cannot see things. Are. So my suggestion is whatever you draw, whenever you draw, please remember to label. But they only want you to label the main tissue. Lah. Just label xylem and phloem enough already. The top part is xylem or phloem, guys. The top part is a uh, xylem. Very good. Okay, the bottom part will be Phloem, correct. Top part is xylem, bottom part is phloem. Don't have to be perfect. Lah. If it's not aligned at both sides, also can one. As long as it's xylem, phloem. Done, guys. Done. You let me know. Yeah, we're going to move to the next one. If you've done already. My drawing is so... Okay, if your drawing is very good, then she should be very good. Lah. You're going to get full marks from drawing. Lah, okay. <laughs> okay, next. In an experiment, cross section are obtained from the root stem and leaf of a diconylidons plant, which has been immersed in a red osseum solution for two hours. Indicate the tissue stain rate by osseum solution in diagram 5.2. Okay, if you don't know what is this osseum solution, doesn't matter. But you know this is a solution, right? If this is a solution, do you think it's transported by xylem or phloem? Of course, it's xylem. Xylem, right? We have to indicate the location for xylem. At leaf, xylem is the top part or the bottom part. Top or bottom, guys. It should be the top part. Very good. The top part is a xylem. Next, for a stem, where is the xylem? Inside or outside? Is inside. Very good. Inside is the xylem. So you just color. Don't have to be red color, guys. It can be any color that you prefer. Okay, and then we have the root. Which one is the xylem? The star shape. All right. We don't call cross. Remember, it's called star shape. Yeah, guys. Star shape xylem. So this is the location for xylem. As you have labeled these three, you get three marks. Easy three marks, guys. Just coloring, you get three marks. But of course, you're going to color the correct area. Lah. Okay, state the differences between the arrangement of vascular bundle in the stem and vascular tissue in the root of a diconylondus plant and the monoconylondus plant. So, look, let's talk about dye first. In stem, for diconyl, which is unicot, right? Unicot has a ring shape. Let me draw the ring shape over here. We have a ring shape in the middle. Because vascular bundle arranged in a ring in diconylondus plants, xylem is inside, phloem is outside. 
at root, they have a star-shaped xylem. The dot, dot, dot means phloem. So phloem fills in the area between xylem. So we're going to write a uh, UD card first, yeah, guys. So for UD card, you can say vascular bundle arranged in a ring around the pit. Xylem has a star-shaped form. Whereas, phloem fills the area between xylem. Fills means that they fill in the blanks. Because it's a cross, right? We have space over here, right? They fill in the blanks. It's called fills the area. Monocot stem, they don't have a ring shape. Monocot, it will be random all over the area. But of course, xylem still inside, phloem still outside. For root, they will form into a ring shape because it's an alternative arrangement of xylem and phloem. So for monocots, we can say vascular bundles are scattered throughout stem. Xylem tissue alternates with phloem tissue in the form of ring. In the form of ring. Okay, done with these guys. If you have done, you let me know. Yeah, we're going to try another question. Two more questions. I'll wait for 10 of you to finish writing this. We're going to move to the next question. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, nice. Next one. Question two. The again below shows the location of a tissue in a plant. Label type of tissue for A, B, C, D, and E in the box provided. Okay, let's label A first. We have to see properly, guys. If you look at A, right? A is over here. It's A. Yeah. They are pointing at the tip of shoot and the tip of root. So do you think they are referring to the meristematic tissue or the permanent tissue? Of course, it's the meristem tissue. It's apical meristem, right? If you want to write apical meristem tissue, it's correct. If you want to write meristematic tissue, it's also correct. Okay, your choice to write up. As long as you mentioned it is a meristematic tissue. Meristematic tissue. Okay, next B. B, they are trying to show these three parts. The leaf, stem, and root. Leaf, stem, and root. They are under permanent tissue. If you don't know they are under permanent tissue, you can look back to your notes. We have leaf, stem, and root, right? Under monocot and unicot. Can you see the page? On top, I write that this is a permanent tissue. Notice that? So B, they are trying to show this is a permanent tissue. Permanent tissue means that they have the cuticle, they have xylem phloem. So this is permanent. This is permanent tissue, okay? And then C, the outermost layer, what tissue is this? They are trying to ask you to write tissue. So your answer has to be tissue, guys. What tissue is the outermost layer? Outermost is known as epidermal. Very good. Epidermal tissue. Epidermal tissue. Very good. It's not epidermis. Huh? Remember, epidermis is the, is the label part. Tissue is called epidermal tissue. D, they are pointing at two different parts, inside, outside, top and bottom, star and the pot. What is D? D is vascular tissue, correct? Okay, E. E, we have only one tissue left. A P, cortex, they are underground tissue, correct? P and cortex, they are underground tissue. So this is ground tissue. Okay, next, diagram below shows the position of permanent tissue in a cross-section of a plant stem. 
uh, we have to label, okay, we have to write what is meant by permanent tissue. A uh, permanent tissue, they have to carry out a process. What process is that? Right, they have to carry out cell differentiation. Very good. As long as they undergo cell differentiation, all of these tissue will have, all mature tissue will have what? Will have specific function. Very good. All of these tissue will have a specific function. So in sentence, we will write, permanent tissue are mature tissue that undergone cell differentiation with specific function. With specific function. Remember all tissue, not just plant guys, even for human when we undergo differentiation, when a cell that forms in the tissue, it's also under, we also have specific function. Okay, then next one, name tissue label P and Q. So again, the question asks what tissue, guys. They didn't ask you to label the structure, they asked you to label the tissue. P is the outermost layer. I mean, even though it's being saying it, but they are trying to label the outermost layer. So what is P? P is epidermal tissue, very good. P is epidermal tissue. What do you think Q is? Q is the cortex, right? Cortex is ground tissue. Very good. Cortex is a ground tissue. Okay, next question. State two characteristics of structure P. Epidermis, epidem sorry, epidermal tissue has what characteristic? The outer layer has to be waxy. Very good. They have cuticle. It's waterproof. Okay, we cannot really write uh, transparent. Even though it's correct they are transparent, but we have to refer back to this is a stem. Stem is transparent, it's not useful for the plant. Only leaf, we, when we write transparent, we have explanation. So we're going to write leaf has transparent cuticle because they want to allow sunlight to enter into it to carry out photosynthesis, right? But this one, even when they are transparent, it's nothing to do with, nothing to do with the, the stem. Lah. But actually, it's correct in leaf, lah, remember that. So you can see they have waxy surface, or you can see it cover by cuticle, and then you can see waterproof layer, waterproof layer. So based on your answer in 2C, explain how is it adapted for tissue P to carry out its function. Whenever you look at the word adapted, we have to always remember adapted means characteristic. Characteristic means adapted. So this is characteristic. Just now we wrote characteristic for tissue P, right? When we say this is waterproof, this is vaccine layer. What is the function of having this vaccine layer? Just now we have mentioned before. Vaccine layer is to prevent excess water loss. So if you notice that the question is almost the same, maybe the way that they, they, they ask you is different, but the answer is always the same. When it asks about the label part, lah. so you have to say cuticle reduces loss of water during transpiration. It protects the stem from mechanical injury or you can say from pathogen also can mechanical injury also correct okay what is the function of root cap just let me say root cap is at the tip of the root tip right so the function of root cap is to act as a protection who do they want to protect they want to protect who Root cap needs to protect the root tip. Root tip, uh, root tip is the one that you want to protect. So you can say protect root tip 
from mechanical injury from mechanical injuries g still an example of the cell modified found in tissue p what is tissue tissue p is epidermal cell so what is the example that can be found in epidermal cell epidermal cell we have cuticle we have ground tissue we have root hair cell but if you want to base on this question to write which is a stem cells then you can write cuticle lah. but if it's not stem cells we can write gut cell also Okay, you can write gut cell, you can write cuticle, you can write root hair cell also. But this is stem, so usually we write cuticle. Lah. If you want to write gut cell, you want to write uh, root hair cell, it's also correct. If it's not based on stem. Okay, name the structure in structure in tissue Q that consists of living cell. Tissue Q is ground tissue. All of the ground tissue ends in chyma. Chyma, chyma, chyma. We have three different chyma. Chyma, chyma, colon, chyma, scaren, chyma. Which chyma is a living cell? Which out of these three, we have two living cells. We have parent chyma and colon chyma, correct? Parent and colon is a living cell because scaren chyma tissue is a dead cell. Scaren chyma tissue, they are taken by lignin. So that's why they are dead cell. So the answer is parent chyma tissue and colon chyma tissue. Okay, parent chyma tissue and colon chyma tissue. Scaren chyma is dead cell, yeah? Okay, now I'm going to try one more question before we go back to notes. We're going to try the three zone. Okay, anybody has question in question two? Anybody want to ask anything in question two? Okay, now we're going to move to next one. Let's look at page, page, uh, page nine, question five. Page nine, question five, guys. Let's try page nine, question five. Diagram below shows three zones of cell growth. Zone P, Q, R at root tip. This is a root tip. Root tip means that we have to look downwards or upwards, guys. Down or up. We have to look upwards in sequence. Huh? So this is in sequence. So we know that R is the first zone. Q is the second zone. P is the first, or uh, P is the last zone. R is the first zone, right? So P, Q, R. R first zone is called zone of cell. Division, very good. Second one is called zone of cell. Elongation, correct. The third zone is called zone of cell. Differentiation, very good. Okay, differentiation. Division, elongation, differentiation. Remember, when you label correctly, it means that your answers will be correct later on. Later, B, C, D, when they're related to back to this zone, right? At least your answer is correct. Okay, remember to label correctly, yeah? Briefly, zone Q, elongation. Elongation means they want to increase in size and mass of the cell. Okay, how do they increase in size and mass of the cell? Where water diffuses into the vacuole, nutrients absorb into the vacuole. So when water diffuses in, it's by what process? Water diffuses in, is always osmosis, very good. And then small vacuole, okay, small vacuole, it will fuse to form into a larger vacuole. Small to larger vacuole known as vacuolation, correct, vacuolation. So form into three sentences. We're gonna write uh, the water, the nutrients, and the vacuolation. If you want to talk about pressure, also can. No, because they will exert the pressure to the cell wall. So you can say nutrients are absorbed into cell and store in back home. Cell are increasing in size when water diffuses into vacuole by osmosis. Small vacuole fused to form into Larger vacuole by 
back population. So remember to talk about the nutrients, the water, and the back population. Done, let me know, guys. We're going to wait for 10 of you to finish. We're going to move to the next question, okay? Let me know when you are done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. Okay, nice. Next one. Briefly explain the process at zone R. Zone R is called zone of cell division. How do we explain zone of cell division? Because only Mary's somatic cell, they will grow, right? They will increase in size by having mitosis, not increasing in number of cells by carrying out mitosis. So the cell in division, we have four characteristics. Remember what are the four characteristics? Number one, it has to be, all right, no vacuum, large nuclei, thin cell wall, and then cytoplasm, very good, four characteristics. So when they are growing, they will go to the next zone. So the, the question is also three marks. We have to explain three sentences with the characteristic of cell. So we have to mention that in zone R, cell R actively divided by mitosis where cells are closely arranged. It consists of large nuclei, thin cell wall, dense cytoplasm, and no vacuole. The increase of number of cell causes elongation of plant stem. When new cells are formed. Cells from previous previously are pushed to zone of cell elongation. Can write large nucleus and small vacuole. Uh, usually it's no vacuola because small vacuola will only form in zone of cell elongation. But large nucleus and nuclei is just singular plural. Nucleus is singular, nuclei is plural. Do we need to write all characteristics for second point? Yes, we need to write all characteristics. Because if you don't write in this question, you will still have to write in other question. So why not you just practice to write the four characteristics? Because you have to write four in, in even in other question when they ask you to write characteristic. Done. Let me know, guys. We will wait for ten of you to finish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What if drawing the zone of cell division need to draw nucleus? Okay, then you draw smaller one if you need to draw nucleus. If you, if you need to draw cell division, you draw smaller one. But because the characteristic is no vacuole, even if you draw no vacuole, it's also correct because that's a characteristic. Okay, now done already. We're going to move to next page. Okay, next one. Yeah. Diagram below shows three zones X, Y, Z in the seed radical. Okay, what does radical mean? Radical means root. Even if you don't know this is a root, doesn't matter, guys. Just I teach you a way to recognize them, right? Look at the tip. So this is the tip, right? Tip, right? 
look upwards. Make sure if you don't know what is this, it's okay. You find the tip, you look upwards. Z is the first one, Y is the second one, X is the third one. So the first one is called zone of self. I believe that you guys know it's called division. Second one is called zone of self elongation. The third one is called zone of self differentiation. I believe that you have no problem writing this anymore because we have practiced the three zone already just now. First, second, third, yeah? Okay. E, describe the shape and structure of cell that can be observed in between the zone of seeding radical. Means we have to explain what is the shape of the cell in cell division, elongation, or even differentiation. We will talk with division first. Uh. Division means that they have no vacuole, small, large nuclei, dense cytoplasm thin cell wall. That is a characteristic during cell division. Elongation means they become bigger in size. They have a larger central vacuole. Differentiation means that they will have specific shape and structure to make sure that they have a specific function. So we have to base on different zones to write the characteristic of the cell because the question asks you to write shape and structure of cell. We have to base on cell to explain our answer. We will start with the first zone first. It's called zone of cell division. So you can say zone of cell division has small cell with then cytoplasm thin cell wall large nuclei no vacuole zone of cell elongation has long and white cell with large vacuole zone of cell differentiation changes the shape and structure of cell to become specialized cell with specific function. With specific function. Done, let me know, guys. Ten of you are same. Are we gonna? I'm gonna wait ten of you to finish this. One, two, two. Teacher, are these questions state paper question? Yes. Some of the most of the questions are state paper, some of it from reference book, some of it from model paper book. So it's combination of all questions. That you can find <laughs> okay now then we're gonna move to question right now okay we're gonna move back to notes right now we're gonna finish off the rest of the parts huh? okay let's get back to your notes guys okay. back to your notes huh? okay so back to this again we're gonna go back to notes we have to learn about primary growth and secondary growth okay what is primary growth what is secondary growth primary growth it happens after germination Okay, we have two groups, primary and secondary, but germination needs to take place first. Germination is the first one. Primary group is the second one. Secondary group is the third one. So we have germination, primary group, and secondary group. Primary group, they want to increase in length. Increase in length, okay? They want to increase in length in the sense of increasing the length of a shoot and length of the root. Secondary group increases in diameter. Increases in the diameter of the plants. So usually increase in diameter, they become more stable uh, because you no, know, the larger the base of support means is the more stable they are, right? When they increase in length, the cell that carry out this increasing in length, it will be apical meristem. Hey, why is it apical? Can you tell me what is the meaning of apical again? We have learned apical means what? Apical means? It means the tip, correct? Apical, it means the tip. It means that the plants, is growing because the tip is growing. 
apical right they will carry out cell division apical apical means the tip the shoot tip increasing they become longer the root tip increasing means they become deeper into the soil what does lateral means lateral means side correct that's why they increase in diameter it's same as human human we can grow tall we can grow fat which one do you think is limited growing tall is limited or growing fat is limited of course, growing tall is limited, lah, guys. If growing tall is unlimited, then everybody gonna be, gonna be very tall right now, right? So growing tall is limited, growing fat is unlimited. Same goes to plant. Plant length is limited, diameter is unlimited. Same as human, ah. Growing tall is limited, growing fat is unlimited. Same goes to plant. So of course, plant increasing in diameter is a good thing, lah, because they want to have more support, right? What type of plants will grow tall? As long as they are plants, they will grow tall. No matter whether they are grass, they are paddy, they are pumpkin, any plant in the world, when they are plants, they will carry out primary growth. But secondary growth is different. Secondary growth only happens in usually not usually in woody plants. We call this as perennial plant. We will learn what is a perennial plant later, but we usually we refer to the woody plant. Woody plant will carry out secondary growth. So they are more tougher and stronger. Okay, how do we differentiate whether they are woody plant or non-woody plant? We can look at the stem. We can also look at whether they are shakeable or not. Okay, later I'll tell you how to recognize this, whether they are woody or non-woody plant. Uh. Okay, in primary growth, the pattern is called normal sigmoid growth curve. For secondary growth, it's known as annual series of sigmoid curve. Okay, what does this two growth curve mean? At the last page of the notes, they have curve over here, right? Uh, this is a curve that we're going to learn later. What is the annual series of growth curve? What is the annual plant growth curve? Okay, I will, I will show you later. So for primary growth, they will ask you, the process happens before and after primary growth. The increases in length or increases in diameter. It happens in apical or lateral. All type of plants are only woody plant. They are limited or unlimited. This is the question that you will see in differences. Differences can be four marks. It can be five marks. It can be six marks. So it's very depending on the question itself. Sometimes it can be a lot of marks or differences in primary group and secondary group. Okay, right now, your turn to answer my question, guys. We have primary group and secondary group, right? Before primary group is what? Process. Before primary group is germination. Very good. After primary group is? After primary group is secondary group. Very good. Primary group increases in length or increases in diameter. Primary growth increases in length, correct? Secondary growth increases in diameter. Very good. So for primary growth increases in length, right? Which part of the cell increases in length? Is it apical or is it lateral meristem? It will be apical meristem. The other one will be lateral meristem. Lah. For increasing in length or increasing in diameter, which one is limited? Primary growth or secondary growth is limited? Of course, primary growth is limited. Secondary growth is unlimited, right? So this is the difference between primary growth and secondary growth. Remember, in exam, they will ask you. Uh, but of course, the most important thing is not the primary growth and secondary growth. It's how do they form into secondary growth. From primary, how do they develop into secondary growth? In order to form into secondary growth, it involves of two tissue. It involves of vascular cambium and cord cambium. It's written over here as well. We have vascular cambium. Yeah. We have cord cambium, vascular cambium, cord cambium. Again, revise a little bit more. Vascular refers to what again? Xylem phloem, right? Xylem phloem, right? Okay, let me draw for you to see. Uh, because this is a stem. Stem has a ring shape, right? So this is a cambium. Imagine this is a cambium. Okay, this is cambium. Cambium is the form xylem and phloem is a cambium. Uh. Okay, the one that face inside is xylem or phloem. The one that face inside, is it xylem or phloem? It's a xylem, right? Okay, we call this xylem, the first xylem, called primary xylem. Primary xylem. Okay, now, outside the cambium, what do we call this as? This is known as xylem or phloem. Outside is phloem, all right? So this is what we call as primary phloem. Okay, we have primary xylem and primary phloem. Because we want to carry out secondary growth, we have to form secondary xylem and secondary phloem. Okay, how do we form? We will form from the cambium. Remember, what, what is the function of cambium? Cambium is to form xylem and phloem, right? So I want to form secondary xylem and secondary phloem. I also form from the cambium. 
So inside over here, after the primary xylem over here, I will form secondary xylem. Okay, inside the ring uh, is secondary xylem. And then if I want to form the other one, which is phloem, I will form at the outside over here. Okay, this is secondary phloem. So everything has to form from the ring itself. You have to form primary first. Only you will form secondary. Remember, you, will form, you have to form primary first. Only you will form secondary. This is how we form secondary xylem and secondary phloem. Okay, we're going to start again. But right now, it's your turn to tell me the answer. Yeah. So first, we start with this thing called cambium. Cambium, uh, cambium is to form xylem and phloem. The one that forms inside. What is the one that forms inside first? What do you call this as? Very good. Primary xylem. Primary xylem. And then, the one that forms outside. This is? Primary phloem. Very good. Primary phloem. And then we have... I cannot see. Let me use a different color. Okay, this one over here. The one that forms after primary xylem, it will be? Secondary xylem, correct? They are still inside. And then the last one, we have the outer layer, I mean, not the, other, the outside one. It's called secondary phloem. So now that do you guys know how to form secondary xylem and secondary phloem already? If they ask you to label, you should know how to label. Primary first, and then they will only grow secondary. Okay, now since we know they are growing, right? From primary, they are growing into secondary. Primary xylem, and primary xylem, they will be pushed into it. The pink color one is primary xylem, right? They will be pushed into the pith. The blue color one is called primary phloem. It will be pushed outside to the epidermis. So one grow into the pith, one grow out to the epidermis. If you read sentence, you should understand. They say that the cambium ring divide to form into secondary xylem. Outside is secondary phloem. It's the one that we draw just now. Xylem is being pushed towards the pith, or pink color pushed towards the pith. Very sense. Phloem will be pushed towards the epidermis. The blue color one will be pushed towards epidermis because they are growing um, laterally. Okay, we have to go laterally. They grow. They are growing laterally, right? They will be damaged. They will burst. They will be stretched and crack. It's like human. Same concept. When you are growing, growing, and growing. Like now, let's say right now, you are already a person who wear L size shirt. L size shirt. Huh? Can you fit into S size again? When you're wearing L size, can you fit into S size? Of course, cannot be right. So what happens when you force when you force yourself to fit into S size shirt when you're supposed to wear L? What happened to the shirt? The shirt gonna burst, right? gonna break into how right? Same goes to this thing. When the plants is growing, they haven't expected that they are growing so big. So the skin, the outer layer, the epidermis will crack. So they will stretch and crack. Who stretch and crack the epidermis, the outer layer? For human, when you are accidentally growing too much, imagine you gain in weight, uh, you becoming fatter and fatter, but your skin cannot grow fatter, right? You will have a stretch mark as well. I don't know if you guys noticed, okay, hopefully that it don't happen to you. Lah. A lot of pregnant women, when they are having babies, right? because they are growing too much, but the skin has not grown so much, they will have a stretch mark. So for plants, they don't have marks. They just crack. Straight away, crack. Huh? So when they crack, they have to make sure that they don't get invasion of pathogen, right? Imagine human, when we have a cut, right? We need to carry out blood coating mechanism. If we don't carry out blood coating mechanism, bacteria goes in, uh, insects will have infection as well, right? Same goes to the plant. So protect the plant. They have this thing called cork cambium, C-O-R-K. Remember we say that when the terms, we have C-O-R-K, what does it mean? It means they are a, C-O-R-K means what? Vascular means xylem and phloem, right? Cork, C-O-R-K refers to what? Refers to the protective layer. The function is to act as the protective layer. So they will act as the protective layer to protect the plants from insects and pathogen attack. They want to make sure that they will prevent all these things from happening to the plant. So that's why on the plant itself, if it's a woody plant, the plant should be rough. There's a layer that you, you think that you can peel off. I don't know if you guys noticed, but try to go outside and see the plant later. Huh? Look at the plant. If it's a woody plant, they have like a skin thing that you can peel off. Those has to be the non, 
has to be the woody plant that carries out secondary growth. If it's a non-woody plant, for example, papaya, banana, the outer layer is smooth, right? And they don't have the cork because they don't need the protective layer. Woody plant, they have the skin that can peel off. It's like a scab of human, okay? Once you peel off everything, uh, they will have bacterial infection, guys. So please don't peel off the plant's bark, okay? It's a protective layer. Okay, how do we look at this diagram over here? We have a sequence. The first one is this diagram. This is the first one. And then it goes into the second one. Third one. Fourth one, okay? It comes in a sequence. One, two, three, four. Okay? We are peeling. Don't peel the plant, please, okay? So we have to look at the last diagram over here. The outer layer here is the cork. Uh, cork is the one that you peel off. That is the part that you can peel off. That is the cork, okay? But it's a protective layer, remember that. And then this is the cambium ring in the middle. The cambium ring. The one that forms first is darker color. We have xylem and phloem. And then the lighter color one is the one that forms later. We have secondary xylem and secondary phloem. So remember now that how do we look at this xylem and phloem already? In exam, they ask you to explain from primary growth, how do they form into secondary growth? This is one of the questions that you will see in your exam, guys. Mark a star, okay? This is something that you're going to see in your exam. Huh? Mark a star over here. It's an AC question. AC means 6, 8, 10 marks. It's an AC question. How does primary growth form into secondary growth instead? Remember to explain based on vascular cambium and cord cambium. Okay? Anybody has question in this page? You want to ask anything in this page? Anybody question? No? Okay, let's look at next one. We have importance of primary growth and secondary growth. As a plant, why do we have to grow? As a human, why do we have to grow? Okay, now for plants, uh, to the plants, why do they need to grow? Primary growth increases in length or increases in diameter. Primary growth increases in length or diameter. Primary growth. Length, right? Okay, increases in length, right? So when it increases in length, the shoot becomes taller to get more sunlight. The root goes down to the soil to get more water. That is the importance. Primary growth allow more sunlight to absorb into the plant to allow more absorption of water when it becomes longer. And then, of course, they have the normal function of xylem and phloem, nothing special over there. And then secondary growth. Secondary growth increases in diameter. Why increases in diameter is a good thing? Because when it's larger diameter, it can provide more support. Like human, when you are bigger in size, you can also have more support, right? So same idea. If you want to explain more on secondary growth, what is the importance towards the plants? We have to say they provide or they produce thick and strong bark. They are able to reduce water loss. They are able to protect the plants against insects of pathogen or pathogen of a pathogen invasion or insects invasion. They can live longer because they have more chances to produce more seed. So usually they don't really ask you what is the importance towards the plants. Most of the time they will ask you what is the importance of the plant undergoing secondary growth to human. Humans and plants, the only relationship that we have is money. Okay, humans and plants is always money, guys. Money, okay, economic importance. What is the importance of plants towards human? Number one, we can sell the wood as a timber. Timber, it means we can do the tiang furniture, table, chair, door. Uh, those are made from timber. They are very strong. They don't really collapse. How do we know whether they are solid wood or plywood? Okay, when you knock at the thing, okay, as you knock at this thing, okay, knock, uh, if the sound is very clear, that will be a plywood. If it's very dense, it will be a solid wood. Solid wood is this one. The timber is a solid wood because timber is used to make into a building beams. If it's a plywood, it means that they're going to collapse. But your, your, your ceiling, if it's not a plaster ceiling, your school ceiling, uh, if you look at your school ceiling, it's square one, right? Uh, those are actually uh, plywood. It's very thin plywood, okay? So timber is very strong. I will explain to you what is anovering later. And then we have wood and bark. Wood and bark is to produce resin and oil. Resin and oil, resin is to use it in pain and vanish. For example, the pain that we use it in uh, room pain or the wall pain. Vanish is a removal. Okay, We can use it for pain and vanish. And then for oil, we can use to produce medication, soap, and also perfume. That's why we have this essential oil. They are also from wood and bark. I don't know if you guys use essential oil or not, but the essential oil that we use is also from plants. We never use any oil from animal, right? We always use oil from plants, maybe the whatever lavender, whatever. Okay, those are from plants, okay? Latex is to produce higher and gloves. 
So that's why we need to have a lot of wood in Malaysia. Malaysia is one of the country that produces a lot of wood. Uh. And we can also use it as an ornamental plant. Ornamental means decoration plant. We can decorate in parks, decorate in, in gardens. Malaysia on the roadside, all of the plants are decoration plants. And all of these plants are being chosen by the government. In total, at the outside of plants, uh, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, we have 16 species of plants. But of course, a normal people we will not identify what kind of plant is that. I know that we have bonsai, you know, the, the normal one, not the expensive one. So we have a lot of different types of plants. Okay, the reason why we need to have plants in the city or in Malaysia, because we want to make sure that we can absorb more carbon dioxide to produce more oxygen and to make it into a green world. So we have a lot of plants in Malaysia. We don't really have Christmas tree. If you have Christmas tree at home, it means that you are very rich, guys. Because Christmas tree requires a lower temperature. Malaysia, we don't have this kind of thing in Christmas tree kind of thing, okay? So this is ornamental plant. Fruit trees, uh, Malaysia got a lot of fruit trees. Malaysia fruit tree, we have durian tree, mango tree, rambutan tree. All of these trees can be exported. When you can export, you can import, means that we can earn money. Either for local consumption or either we can export. Mango, okay, the mango not the most expensive one. The most expensive one is actually durian. Durian, in, 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 not in Malaysia, right? in other countries, they sell it as so expensive, guys. So, so, so expensive. Maybe a normal durian, like a normal durian that you eat, maybe you buy in Malaysia, it's 50 ringgit. In other countries, you buy it at 500 ringgit, guys. But in Malaysia, durian is the one that earns a lot of money based on fruit itself. So durian, we can have fruit every single year because they bear fruit every single year. So that's why this is what we call as a economic importance towards a secondary group of plants. Talking about timber, we have annual ring, right? What is annual ring? The one that we see over here, this thing here is called annual ring. Every one ring means how many years? Every one ring means one year. Annual means one. So it's one year. Every ring here is one year. So if you want to count the ring, you can count the line, you can count the space. But how does this thing is being formed? The ring is formed from two seasons. We have spring and summer. So during springtime, when there's enough of sunlight, the cell wall, it will be large, thin, and lighter in color. During summertime, it's narrow and darker in color. How do you want to remember? Remember, summer means very hot, right? If it's very hot, it will be darker in color. The vessel is like a tan line. They, they will form like a tan line over here. So it's darker in color. During spring, it means opposite. So usually during springtime, they will have a larger gap. The larger gap is spring. The line is during summertime. Malaysia, we don't have four seasons, but Malaysia, we also have annual ring because as I mentioned, Malaysia is one of the countries that we export a lot of wood. In Sabah, Sarawak, it's one of the states that have a lot of wood and it's very expensive, guys. So Malaysia is based on raining season and dry season. We will have annual ring. Every year, we have one ring formation. This is how annual ring is being formed. But of course, we have to follow textbook. We don't write dry season and raining season. We always based on spring and summer. Okay, spring and summer. Because of we have alternate lighter, darker color, lighter, dark color, we will have an annual ring. Talking about wood, uh, you know, during my high school time, uh, I know that how to differentiate a solid wood and plywood. Uh, I have friends who experience the ceiling top is a plywood. During my high school time, I have friends who is very naughty. So they're trying to pawn things. I don't know any one of your friends tried to pawn things or not because... I'm a very good student, guys. I never pointing class before. But my friends tend to pointing class. You know, at the ceiling. Can you imagine it's your ceiling top? Your school, ah, huh? as your ceiling, right? We are like a square like that one, right? Do you guys ever notice that your ceiling is like a square? Like a rectangular kind of thing? And then at one point, you have this hole that you can push outwards. Have you guys ever noticed that? You can push outwards one, okay? So that thing is actually a plywood. My friends, not my friends, sorry, my classmates, they are very adventurous. They went up to the ceiling. They went up to the ceiling, you know. They tried to ponting the class. But you know, once you go out from a school, you got caught very easily, right? So they ponting. They went up to the class. So how are they ponting? They just sit down at the tiang. This tiang over here is timber. This is timber, guys, because the demo break. This is actually the timber. So they were, are walking around. Because, you know, in one row of the class, we have, imagine, like, we have A, B, C, D, E. We have five classes in total, like, you no know, five. So they are walking around at class A all the way to class E, example, like, okay? A to E, A to E. So one time, there was this one time, this boy, accidentally, his leg fell from this part. 
So the lid went down. The ceiling broke into half. The ceiling, okay, my classroom is at the fourth floor, guys. The ceiling broke into half. Then that time, I remember it was an MX class. So in my class, there was a person who had a fracture. He used um, crutches. So the teacher scolded a boy. He asked, he scolded a boy, why you use the crutches to put into a hole? So the entire class was laughing, guys. We, because I know that, we know that the fence is upstairs, okay? Then the ceiling went down, right? So he scolded the student why he broke the ceiling by using the crutches. But because someone is on top, of course, nobody said anything now. We just laugh loud, okay? This is the first time. He broke one of the ceiling. Like, the ceiling went down. The teacher will just assume it's some cat or some rat. Lah. The second time, another boy, I don't know who I forgot who it is because it's just classmate. He went to other class. Like, he walked across the class at the ceiling. He fell down to the class. He fell down, you know? He fell down. And then because the ceiling attached with the fan, right? So the fan was spinning. The spinning, spinning, spinning. It's spinning and then it fell down. It, the fan hit on the girl head. The girl fainted. Of course, the guy, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened to the guy. Lah. Maybe probably got bong scholala. Fell down, you know, the entire ceiling fell down and the fan is spinning and then hit on the girl head. I know you think it's very funny, but it's very scary. Imagine you are the girl sitting there below. It's literally down, down, you know. So scary, man. So uh, no, I didn't die, lah. just fan, just fainted. Okay, just fainted, okay. Just fainted only. No blood coming out. Only hit on one part only. La. So luckily the guy, the girl didn't die, guys. It was something very big in my school last time. Eh. Pointing at the roof. So how do I know whether how do I know whether it's timber? Because my friend tried, my classmate tried it. This one over here is timber. This is not timber, this is plywood. This is the plywood, okay? This is the plywood. So that now that we know, timber can produce beams for buildings but plywood cannot produce for beams for buildings uh, high quality and we never use annual ring to make it into a sitting because it's too expensive but uh what we do with the hole over here we usually hide our phones on the ceiling lah because no during um, spot check time to know where to hide we hide over there most of the time okay hopefully that you guys don't have to try now that your prefect knows where where you guys hide your phone already guys I know that your school has locker, don't have to do this anymore. Okay, back to this again, so that you can try to knock and see whether they are timber or, or they, are, they are wood, because it's very important for you to know. Uh. This one is one of the questions that you will see in your exam. It can be a structural question, it can be AC question. It's five marks. It is five marks. It can be structural, it can be AC. So you have to write timber has what characteristic, wood and bark has what characteristic, fruit tree has what characteristic. It's one of the questions that you will see in your exam. Okay, now, done with economic importance, we're going to look at the last one, which is the growth curve. We have three different growth curves. We have annual plants, biennial plants, and perennial plants. Annual means how many years, guys? Annual means how many years? Annual means one year, correct? So the plant can only live for one year. After one year, they die. Buy, B-I. Buy means how many years? All right, two. They can live for two years or two seasons, and then they will die. Perennial plant. Perennial. It means they can live for more than two years. Many, many, many years. Ah, uh, many, many, many years. It's called perennial plants. Okay, all of these three growth curve. Most of the time, they will ask about annual plants. Okay, now how do we answer annual plant? First, we have A, B, C, D. We have four different parts. Let's start with A first. We have dry mass. We have time. For those who don't know, what is a dry mass? Dry mass means that it's a mass without water. We call this as dry mass. It's a mass without water. It's called dry mass. Huh? Why A is decreasing? Because for A, at this part, it's called germination. Germination means what? They will use the food in the seed to germinate into a small, tiny little plant. It's called germination. They will use the food stored in seed. So when the food is being used up, the mass decreases. But at B, why do they increase? Because once they form into leaf already, they can carry out photosynthesis. So for B, it's photosynthesis. They form leaf, they carry out photosynthesis, it produces more food, they store more food, they will increase in weight, the mass. C, why is it constant? Because at C, the growth rate is zero. The growth is zero. Why is it zero? Because the plant has matured. Okay, the plant has matured, they have reached the maximum. That's why it's zero. Same as human, when we reach a certain point of life, our cell produced is equal to cell eliminated. So it's equal. D is decreasing. 
Why is D decreasing? Because D is aging process. Aging means that they are, they are getting old. And then they will try to produce seed. Once they produce seed, they will die. This is A, B, C, D. This is in sequence. That A is germination, B is photosynthesis, C is zero growth, D is aging process. In exam, they will ask you based on A, B, C, D. You have to remember this. Huh? Okay, why we call this as annual plant? Because the starting point is germination. The ending point is to produce seed. And the explanation I've written over here already. This is a four, set, four point that you have to know. What other plants are annual plants? They can only live for one year. We have watermelon, they can live for one year. Tomato, pumpkin, paddy. Do you have to know the example in exam? Sometimes they ask you to write example, one or two examples. So at least you have to know two examples. Lah. Just remember paddy and watermelon. It's easy, lah, okay? paddy, watermelon. You can only live for one year. For, for biennial plants, bi means two. We have two different seasons over here. Either they can live for two seasons or two years. We have two sigmoid growth curve. Means this and this is the same. But they can continue over here. We have vegetative growth. We have reproduction. Vegetative means what? They will start to produce the leaf, stem, and root. Again, okay, normal. Lah. And they can carry out photosynthesis. They will produce food. Lah. Exactly the same as just now. But usually the food that they produce is underground organs. We call this as tubers. Tubers, underground organ. Can you guys tell me any example that you know they are underground? Means usually tubers, are, they are not green in color. We have carrot. We have onion, right? We have uh, cabbage. All of these are not green in color. So when they are underground organ, they usually last for very long because during summer and springtime, they have a higher rate of photosynthesis. During winter time, they will stop growing because winter... No sunlight, ma, it's too cold. The plants cannot carry out photosynthesis. That's why it becomes slower. Reproduction, second, second season, uh, they will produce flower and seed. So once they produce flower and seed, they will die. So actually, same as just now. Just now, the ending point is also producing seed, right? This is also the same. When they produce seed, they will also die. So it's a combination of annual plant because they can only live for two seasons of a biennial plant. Perennial plant is different. Perennial plant, they will really live for many, 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 many seasons. Many seasons means that they, they are a bit hard to die lah, unless you kill them. Lah. They don't really die themselves unless you kill them. We have herbaceous plant, we have woody plant. Not woody plant can be perennial plant. Woody plant, they can perennial plant. Okay, what are examples of non-woody plant? They can live for many years. The answer is grass. Like the grass, like the parang grass, you know. Grass are ah, very hard to die one, guys. I don't know if you notice. Grass is so hard to die. No matter how you kill it, they will still have a way to grow it. Right? So that's why grass is a perennial plant because it never die. So hard to die. Okay, all of this S curve over here show that the growth, okay, they will increase. It means that they are growing and then they stop growing. Growing, stop growing, growing, stop growing. So durian tree, mango tree, barangutan tree, they are also under perennial plant. During spring and summer, they have the best growing season. During winter time, they will stop and they will slow down and stop. How come they never even mention about autumn? Because autumn has no leaf. No leaf means what? No leaf means no process. In autumn time, they just want to, they just want to make sure that they can survive through winter. So they have to fall the leaves. The leaves have to fall. And then they have to store a lot of energy to make sure they can survive through winter time. So that's why we don't we really talk about autumn because autumn got no leaves. Only spring and summer, highest rate. Winter has the lowest rate. So this is perennial plant. In exam, they will give you a graph. They will ask you, what are the examples of fruits? They will ask you to explain the graph. But most likely, they will ask you about annual plant because annual plant has the most graph that you can explain. So most of the time, they will ask you about annual plants. Okay? So let me give you a, a summary of what you have to study in chapter one, guys. So in chapter one, summary. Uh, first, in page two, we have to know about the tree zone location. Either you look up or you look down. In lateral Mary stem, we have to know we have vascular cambium and cord cambium. Okay, the explanation don't have to know now, mind, but you know the name. And then for page three, this page is an introduction that what you have to learn in next few chapters. Uh, in chapter one, actually you just have to know function enough already, but don't have to know the detail detail one lah. And then for page four, you only have to know about unicord, monocord. Don't have to study because as I mentioned, monocord your textbook don't have. You only have to know about unicord. And then page five, we have the tree zone. One, two, three. Everything in this page is important. They ask you to explain based on structure or based on AC question. At least you know how to do it. 
AC and structural pressure. And then page six, the most important part is actually how do you form into a secondary group? This is one of the common asked AC question. Not AC, also structure, lah, guys. You also have to know. Remember everything here related to vascular cambium and cord cambium. Okay, and then for page seven, you have to know about the importance of secondary growth towards economic, towards human. What is the important one? Okay, this is the important thing. Uh, sometimes two or three marks, they ask you about the formation of annual ring. Sometimes uh, they ask you about formation of annual ring. Page eight, uh, if you only want to study one part, then study annual plan. If you only study, study one part, just study annual plan. So this is the growth curve. Okay, anybody has question on the notes? Anybody has question on notes? Okay, no. We can we try one question before we end class? Try one question, yeah. How to know the age of the plants? Do we count the bright color one or the darker color one? Okay, now how to count? How to count the age of the plants? Are uh, either you count the lines or either you count the space, whichever one. So my preference, I usually count the lines. Okay, usually I will count the lines now most of the time. Okay, you count the first one right in the middle first. Uh. First one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. The outer layer, we don't have to count because the outer layer is the epidermis. So you count the line, it's easier. You can also count the space, but the space sometimes is harder to see. Just count the line, it's better. Okay, so now that you, have, you know how to count, just count the line. You okay, don't count the outer layer one. Uh. The outer layer is the epidermis. Teacher, the bright ring is caused by spring and dark ring is caused by summer. Okay, because we have to follow textbook there. If your textbook, because textbook writes spring and summer, so we always follow textbook. But if your textbook, if your teacher updated the textbook, then you follow the teacher. If it's not, we always follow the textbook. Different reference book, they will write different answer. But if you have textbook writing spring and summer, because I follow textbook lah. So that's why I write spring and summer. Do we have to know the specific name of the plants when we're writing example? No need. We just have to write pumpkin. <laughs> Paddy, you don't have to write specific name. In biology, we don't write a specific name unless we are trying to write the name of bacteria or we are, we are trying to write um, paramecium species or amoeba species. If it's not, then we just write the normal name. Okay, so let's try one question, guys. And let me flip back to the question. Okay, let me flip. Uh. Let's try a little bit of question. Page, 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 page 16, guys. Page 16. Page 16, question 10. Let's try one question. The game below shows a secondary group of a stem of a unicot. Identify P, Q, R, S, T, U. Okay, let's start from P first. P is the easier one because P is outside. Q is inside, right? What is P, guys? P is primary. All right, this is primary phloem. This is primary xylem. Quite easy, like okay, P and Q. And then R, the inner one. This is not epidermis yet, okay? R is actually the cambium, the cork cambium. C-O-R-K can be because only the outermost layer should be the epidermis. So R is a top can be. And then T and S. What is T and S, guys? It's from the outer layer, right? I mean, it's from the cambium ring, right? So they are secondary xylem and secondary phloem, correct? So T is secondary xylem. So it's secondary phloem. S is secondary xylem. Inside is xylem, outside is phloem. And then U is the cork. C -O Actually, it's over here. La. It labeled at the wrong part already. This one here, the pink color that I labeled over here, this is cork. C O R K cork, yeah. So this is the label part. In other time with this label, we're going to look at next one. Explain the role of R in woody plant. R is cork cambium. Remember, we say cork cambium, we have two different tissue. What tissue do we have in cork cambium? To carry out secondary growth. Woody plants mean secondary growth. Uh, woody means secondary growth. Secondary growth over here, we have inner cork and outer cork. Okay, for cork cambium, they'll form into inner and outer cork. 
inner cork cell and sorry, inner cortex, sorry, inner cortex and outer cork cell. Inner cortex and outer cork cell. Okay, in sentence we can write R forms new cork cell on outer side to protect plants from physical damage. It also produces cell on inner side, which is inner cortex that enable plan to increase in diameter. Okay, next. What is the significance of primary growth and secondary growth in plants? Okay, what is the importance? Significance means importance. Huh? Significance means importance. They want you to write importance of primary and secondary. Okay, let's talk about primary first. Primary increases in length or increases in diameter, guys. Primary increases in length or increases in diameter. Primary increases in length, right? So once they increase in length, it also means that they are trying to get more sunlight or get more water. Secondary growth increases in diameter. Increases in diameter means that you can get more mechanical support. So one mark each is enough already. So you can see, to allow plant to lengthen root to absorb water and minerals to increase in diameter to provide mechanical support to plant. So one increases in length, the other one increases in diameter. Okay, now I'll wait for 10 of you to finish. We're going to move to the next question, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, next one. Primary growth and secondary growth allow plants to increase in size. State two similarity and two differences between primary growth and secondary growth in plants. Okay, now we're going to write two similarity, two differences. Sometimes when the question did not state any answer, right? Let's say they ask you to compare and contrast. Remember, compare and contrast, you also have to write similarity and differences, yeah? So what is the similarity between primary growth and secondary growth? Actually, just now we wrote about the differences already. Just write two similarity. Involve mitosis, correct? What else besides involve mitosis? Increases the size of pump permanently, correct? We can also write, okay, you cannot write happens in living organism. Lah. Everything also happens in living organism. But we can talk about the, okay, we can write this answer. Since you write two already, I'll give you another answer. You can say that it will happen in non-woody plant as well. Every non-woody plant will carry out primary growth and secondary growth, no matter whether they are woody or no matter whether they are grass or not. So as long as they are plants, they will carry out primary growth and secondary growth. So you can see both growth occurs in non-woody plant. The other one you can see both growth involve cell division by mitosis. Okay, primary growth and secondary growth, what you can write, you can write the increases in length, it involved in apical meristem. You can also write, uh, they are 
Limited, yeah, unlimited also can. Whichever tool that you prefer, guys, whichever tool, okay? So for primary growth, you can see growth is limited. This one, increase in length. Secondary growth, growth is unlimited, increases in diameter. Oh, sorry, woody plant, thank you. Happens in woody plant. We are saying no, woody, woody plant, woody plant, okay? Both allowed in woody plant. Okay, next. Marawan and Chenggao are two examples of plants that undergo secondary growth. Give one characteristic of plants that undergo secondary growth. Okay, now the plant that undergo secondary growth has to be hard, wood, and strong. Since we say, right, all of this timber, it needs to be hard so that they can make it into a building beam. If they are not hard enough, how are you supposed to survive? Okay, next, what are the commercial use of these plants? What is the function of having Marawan Chenggao? In exam, uh, sometimes they ask you to write the example of plants. So, don't need to write the specific scientific name. What you have to do is just write Marawan and Chenggao will do so. Don't need to write specific name. Like this, all of the scientific name don't have to write. Just write Marawan and Chenggao will do so, okay? You can say, make it into a furniture, make it into building beams, make it into a door, a fence, also can. Two marks, you're going to write two. So you can see, or you can also make it, make it into resin and oil as well, or whichever, like, okay, decorate, I also can whichever you prefer. So you can see Marawan, it produces resin and oil. And then we have Chenggao, a can't make into furniture. And get into furniture. Okay, so we will end up for today. Hopefully that you can understand chapter one better. The rest of the question answer, I will be, I'll post the answer in the website so you can get the answer in website. The video will also be posted in YouTube channel as well. Any question you can ask me. No question. I will see you guys tomorrow for my student. No, then I will see you guys when I see you guys again, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. See you guys next week. Bye, the rest of you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, guys. Bye.